Happy New Year everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and today I've got a very special video where I answer some questions from all of you guys, which you asked me over the past couple days on YouTube and Twitter. I just wanted to do this special little video as a way of celebrating both a new year and a whole new decade. So without further ado, let's jump into some of your questions. First up, what is your favorite Overwatch event and why? Probably I'm going to have to go with Halloween Terror as my favorite event. I think the skins for that event are just fantastic. And additionally, Junkenstein's Revenge is by far my favorite event game mode out of all of them, even more than the Archives PvE missions. Something about Junkenstein is just so much fun just fighting oncoming wave after wave. So I gotta go with Halloween as my favorite event. What kind of new seasonal events would you like to see added to Overwatch 2? And which event in particular do you hope returns? I'm gonna answer the second part of this question first. I think we're going to see Summer Games, Halloween, Winter Wonderland, and Lunar New Year. The four of those I'm pretty confident are going to be coming back in Overwatch 2, at least in some form or another. Archives and Anniversary are the two which I could potentially see not coming back, or if they do there's going to be some sort of significant changes to how they work. So honestly I would like to see all of the events come back. I would definitely like to see some changes made to them to make them more fresh and interesting. But yeah, I just would like to see all the events return. There aren't any events that I dislike, so yeah, I'd like to have them all back. As for new seasonal events, however, I think rather than seeing specifically seasonal events that are based on like a real world holiday or just like summertime, I would like to see some more different themed events, like ones based around space, where you might have a bunch of astronaut skins and some sort of game mode based around that, or a junker themed event where you get a lot of junker themed skins. I I think it'd be really interesting if Blizzard implemented some sort of themed event mechanic like that, which could possibly be something we end up seeing in Overwatch 2. What Overwatch faction do you think has the most potential? I assume you don't want to hear the boring answers of Overwatch, Null Sector, and Talon, since we already know those obviously have a ton of potential and are definitely going to be playing major parts, at least in Overwatch 2. So aside from them, I'd say that the Junkers and Vishkar are both really interesting interesting factions that not only have a lot of potential, but I kind of get the feeling that Blizzard actually has big plans for them. Like for Vishkar, you of course got Symmetra and Lucio, plus whatever Sanjay is up to. And then for the Junkers, you have the Junker Queen, in addition to the three Junker heroes which already exist on the roster. So yeah, Vishkar and Junkers I think have a lot of potential, and I'm super excited to see what Blizzard does with those. What are your thoughts specifically on Bastion? Oh, boy. Boy, Bastion. <laughs> poor, poor Bastion. I've said this before in videos, I don't think I've really talked about it much recently, but Bastion, in my eyes, is just a victim of how Overwatch as a game has changed over time. The pacing and just the way heroes work in Overwatch has definitely been shifting more and more towards mobility as time goes on, and Bastion, of course, has just sort of fallen victim to the fact that his entire character is based around immobility. As for how to change him even, it's really hard to say. Unlike Torbjorn and Symmetra, which have had fairly successful reworks in the past, Bastion suffers from the fact that at his very core he's supposed to be an immobile hero. He's a stationary turret with a lot of damage output. But in Overwatch, where mobility is oftentimes king, it just doesn't really work and so he just suffers from the fact that there's no clear direction to really push him in without fundamentally changing what identifies him as a character. So yeah, those are my basic thoughts. I kind of wish I had some better ideas about how to fix him. That might be something I work on in the future because I do have a soft spot for Bastion. I would love to see him become viable for, well, once ever. How do you think that Blizzard could solve the DPS queue time issue? The only way that Blizzard can fix this issue is by better incentivizing players to want to play tanks and supports more than DPS. Now, there's a few different ways of doing this. Of course, you already have the free loot box you get for playing low queue time roles, which always ends up being tanks at the moment. But additionally, I think in the long term, what they need to focus on is just finding ways to introduce or 
possibly rework, but I think it'd be better to just add new heroes, which sort of change the fundamental view of how tanks and supports work. Add new heroes into those two categories, which are interesting and appealing to DPS players. That's honestly the only way you can really get the queue times to balance out. What's your favorite game besides Overwatch? Well, my all-time favorite video game franchise is the Half-Life series, which is why I was so super duper excited when they finally announced Half-Life Alex last November. But in terms of other like multiplayer games, yeah, there's quite a few that I enjoy. Of course, I've always enjoyed TF2. There's games like Left 4 Dead, which I've always been a big fan of. Recently, I've actually been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight, which is a very fun game. Although if you think Overwatch has a toxic community, it's got nothing on the toxicity in Dead by Daylight. Are you worried about YouTube's new policies affecting your livelihood? Now, this is a very good question, and one that's definitely very relevant in the time being. Honestly, I'm not that worried for myself. There's obviously been a lot of concern about how these different things like COPPA and these other sort of policy changes are gonna end up impacting different YouTubers. In general though, for a gaming channel where I cover a T-rated game that obviously has violence in it, I'm almost certainly gonna be safe. Of course, there's always the possibility of my channel getting hit by some stuff that ends up demonetizing certain videos or taking some of my videos down. But just considering the type of content I actually make and the reality of the situation and how the FTC is going to actually be pushing these new sort of policies and how YouTube is going to be enforcing them themselves, personally, I don't really have much concern. There's actually a really good video done by Jim Sterling, which I recommend and will have linked down in the comments below. Just be alert that there is some profanity in the video, but he does a really good job of explaining why content creators like myself and most gaming channels aren't really going to be at much risk. Now, there certainly are a lot of channels which are going to be tremendously at risk. For example, as someone who's a massive fan of LEGO and always loves keeping up with the new sets and themes they put out by following a number of different LEGO YouTube channels, those channels are definitely at risk of getting hit. Anything that deals with toys or kids stuff, even if it's done in a sort of general sense where technically adults can find it appealing as well, they're definitely going to be at risk, and I honestly don't know what to expect for them. It does really suck because there are a lot of content creators who do great things out there who are going to be devastatingly hit by these new policy changes. So overall, yeah, it really does kind of suck, but I'm at least thankful that I personally am unlikely to be hit with anything too drastic. I know there has been quite a bit of fear mongering going around and trying to capitalize on the idea of, oh, YouTube is dead. It's really not that bad. Bad. Yes, it is bad. It's not the end of YouTube bad, though. So if you're concerned, I'm sure there are some channels you've probably follow which are going to be at risk. But in general, it isn't the end of the world. How many golden guns do you have? This is a question I surprisingly get asked pretty often, even just in the comments of my other videos. So here, these are all my golden guns. I have the golden guns for every tank hero except for Winston, and my goal currently is to get his golden gun before Blizzard adds a new tank hero, which, going by their current track record, shouldn't be too hard to accomplish. Have you ever played Subnautica? Yes, I love Subnautica. That is such a great game, and I am kind of surprised that I got asked about that specifically. That was definitely one of my favorite games I played in 2019, even though I'm pretty sure it came out before 2019, but I played it last year and I loved it. Are there any YouTubers you'd want to collaborate with? I'd like to see you collab with Bro You Whack. I've done a few collaboration things with some other YouTubers. Of course, the Astrobiologist and Euclidean Vision. They're both friends of mine that have YouTube channels where we've done sort of like podcast stuff. I would love to do a collaboration with Bro You Whack, though. I actually got to meet him in person at BlizzCon, and he's just a really cool guy. He's definitely been putting out amazing content on his channel, and yeah, I would love the opportunity to get to do something with him. 
Do you have any rare Overwatch figures like the Witch Mercy Funko Pop? The rarest Overwatch figure I have is actually probably the Golden Gun Tracer LEGO minifigure, which Blizzard actually sent to me last Christmas back in 2018. So yeah, that's definitely the rarest of the figures I have, which to be honest, I don't even really have that many of. What's your favorite YouTube content to make, and what content do you wish you could do? By far my favorite type of videos to make are the hero concepts. I I love just taking these characters, either one that already exists in the story or is just an idea that I've sort of come up with based on other things, and designing just a kit and abilities for those characters. Putting them together and trying to imagine how they might actually work as a playable hero is just really enjoyable. So those are definitely my favorite types of YouTube content to produce, and as for what I wish I could do, I don't know. Honestly, I kind of wish that I could do some things that were not Overwatch related. That might be something I consider doing in 2020. However, I do plan on keeping this channel specifically exclusively focused on Overwatch. If I ever do end up making videos for some other game or some other genre, then that'll probably be a separate channel which I start independently of this one. What's your personal favorite hero concept you've made? <sighs> it's pretty tough but I think it's probably a tie between my Junker Queen concept and my Overlord concept. Both of those I think would be really, really fun heroes to play in game, and are just in general really interesting characters that I'd love to see added. Before Overwatch was a thing, what did you do in your spare time? Well, I spent the vast majority of my time basically just sitting in absolute silence and darkness, not really doing anything. So yeah, when Overwatch ended up coming out, that was, that was actually a really nice transition to actually get to do something a bit more interesting. Interesting. All right, to wrap up this video, I'm just gonna do a quick sort of lightning round where I answer some questions super quickly and use a little bit of help from some of the characters in game. So let's get on with it. What is your favorite tank, healer, and DPS? Beware of small mammals. Do you want a bandage for that? Small! Are you single? Self-assessment, lonely, rolling ball. Wrecking Ball or Hammond, which name do you prefer? Wrecking Ball Online. Why do you like Overwatch so much? It's the little things. Who is best girl? I told you to stop resisting. Have you ever actually attempted to get your hero concepts put in game? Believe me, the day I get an email back from Jeff Kaplan, I'll let all of you know. And with that, that's all the time I have for today in this video. Thank you everybody who sent in questions. I'm sorry that I couldn't reasonably get to answering every single one of them. I always super duper appreciate the support you guys give my channel, just watching my videos and any of that. It's really amazing to think that I actually have managed to build up a bit of an audience and that there are people who like the videos I put out. That makes me so happy. And so thank you all so much for watching. As always, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, Happy New Year, and have a great day.